Hi, and welcome to another in a series of technology-focused tips from K2 Enterprises. Today's tip is going to focus on Excel's Ideas feature, a feature that we think is a uh, great way to summarize and analyze data. My name is Tommy Stevens. I'm one of the shareholders at K2 Enterprises. Thanks for dropping by today. We hope that you will find this to be a good investment of your time. Now, as we get started with this short discussion of ideas, let's review just a couple of fundamentals of what ideas is all about, maybe a few limitations of ideas, and then we'll show you at a very practical level how you can take advantage of this feature. First off, Ideas is a relatively new tool. It currently appears only in versions of Excel that are provided through Office 365 or Microsoft 365 subscriptions, and it also is available through Excel Online. Now you can read into that if you want to look at the at the converse side of that. You can read into that if you are currently using a, a perpetual license of Excel, such as Excel 2019, Excel 2016, etc. You do not have access to ideas, nor will you have access to ideas until presumptively uh, the next version, the next release of Excel, uh, which we anticipate sometime around the year 2022. So recognize that this is presently uh, primarily geared uh, to Office 365 and Microsoft 365 uh, subscribers. Secondly, another important consideration is as it stands, ideas cannot handle extremely large data sets. And by extremely large data sets, we mean data sets with greater than 1.5 million cells. Now, the good news there is most of us don't work with data sets that large, so that is probably in many cases more of a, let's call it a theoretical limitation than it is a practical limitation, but be aware of it nonetheless. Additionally, before you run ideas or attempt to take advantage of ideas, you need to address any dates that are in your data sets that are stored as text strings. If ideas sees those as text strings, it is going to treat them as text. So you would not be able, for example, to filter by year or something of that nature. Uh, the most common way of handling that, of course, would be to use Excel's date function or date value function, write a formula that contains one of those functions and points to those text strings and effectively converts those text strings into true Excel dates. And then the fourth limitation that we need to be aware of is ideas cannot work with merged cells. If you have merged cells inside your data set, you will first need to unmerge them before you run ideas on the data set. Now, speaking of running ideas on the data set, why? Why would we want to run ideas on the data set? It's quite simply this. Ideas can very, very quickly summarize and analyze that data without the necessity of me or you going in and writing formulas to do the same task. In fact, the data set that we're going to look at in just one second, uh, it's not an overly large data set. It has around 16,000 cells in it, as I recall. And what you will find is that Ideas is going to generate about 37 different pivot tables and pivot charts in a matter of a couple of seconds that summarize that data and call to my attention perhaps some facts about that data that I would otherwise have missed. Ideas does represent, at least in my mind, a, an evolution of artificial intelligence that is starting to incorporate artificial intelligence into Excel. And again, you will see an example of that once we jump into the data. So speaking of the data, let's head that way. Now here is the data set that we need to summarize. As you can tell, it appears as to, it, it appears to be some uh, level of transactional data, transactional data that uh, summarizes, or I'm sorry, contains all of the details of sales orders, sales transactions uh, that a specific company might have um, uh, might have incurred. Notice we have the order date, which is actually a true Excel date that's not text. We have the order amounts, customer ID code, employee ID code, etc. If you have access to ideas, you will find it on the home tab of the ribbon, and you will see it uh, on my home tab of the ribbon in the upper right-hand corner, clearly there where it says ideas. To run ideas, all I have to do is click anywhere inside the data set. I don't have to select the entire data set, just click anywhere, click on ideas, and now in real time, you're seeing ideas go in and do its magic. It's analyzing the data, and momentarily it will provide back to us, as it just did, a series of pivot tables and pivot charts about this data. 
Now, notice that I did not have to go in and build those pivot tables and pivot charts. I can simply benefit from the pivot tables and pin up, excuse me, and pivot charts right now by sifting through them to find things that I might not have seen with the naked eye. In this case, I hope you could make it down or make out uh, below this last chart down here. It's, it's actually generated a total of 37 pivot tables and pivot charts. And if I click and say show them all, now it's starting to go in and show me all of the pivot tables and pivot charts. And what I find to be interesting about ideas, among other things, um, and, and find to be very useful, is notice that, for example, it has found for employee ID number seven, five outlier transactions. Notice that it is found, and, and, and so I find that to be interesting because I would probably have not seen that with the naked eye. That is to say, if I had just been looking at all of these transactions in the tabular form over here on the left-hand side, I would probably not have noticed those five transactions. But it has also found some other trends that we might find to be useful. For instance, for customer ID number 12, employee ID number 3 has a noticeably higher order amount. Now, if I'm the sales manager, I would like to know things like that because I want to go uh, to employee number three and ask them what are they doing to treat customer number 12 in such a fashion that customer number 12 um, uh, spends so much more money with employee number three than customer 12 spends with any of our other salespeople. And similarly, for customer 26, employees 6 and 9 appear to have pretty good relationships there. I would want to know how, they, how employee 6 and how employee 9 is being able to achieve those level of sales. Scrolling back up just a little bit, if we wanted to insert the pivot chart or a pivot table into the worksheet or into the workbook for that matter, uh, all we would have to do is just simply click where it says insert pivot chart or insert pivot table as the, depending upon which object we're talking about, and ideas would automatically insert that into the uh, workbook for us. So you can see that ideas is there to automate the somewhat rote task that many of us would find ourselves doing when we have a large volume of data and we need to begin summarizing it, particularly by different dimensions, such as by customer ID, by employee ID, etc. So we're getting that, the benefit of that level of automation. But we also get something better from ideas. Recently added to ideas was the ability to ask a natural language question, to type in a question of ideas. It does not yet handle voice recognition. I, I believe that to be forthcoming, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future. But what I can do is in this question pane, this question box, I should say, uh, up in, at the top of the ideas pane, I can simply type in a question, something like, uh, I, want to, I want to sum, give me a sum of the order amount for employee ID number four. So I'm telling ideas exactly what I want. I press the enter key and now all of a sudden we have a pivot table that gives us the sum of the order amount for employee ID number four. Now, maybe I need to refine that a little more. I could go back up here and edit the existing question or type a new one. I'll just edit the existing one and say, I need to actually focus on the month of December. And let's see just how productive employee ID number four has been in the month of December. And now notice that my pivot table for employee ID number four is filtered down to just the months of December. That would be December 2018 and December 2019 in this case. As you've seen, Excel's Ideas feature is a significant step toward enabling artificial intelligence in Excel. However, it is also a very practical tool to help us uncover trends, outliers, and other vital facts that we might miss otherwise with the human eye. Further, because of the natural language query capabilities, we can now tell the tool precisely what we want to know, and it will respond accordingly. Excel's Ideas feature truly does have a lot to offer, and if you have access to it, do yourself a favor and give it a try today.